Hello and welcome into another edition of Siena Saints Weekly. I'm your host Andrew Champagne. In just a moment we'll be joined by Siena second baseman Dan Paolini, but first let's take a look at the week that was in Siena Athletics. It was a rough weekend in New York City for men's basketball. The Saints lost close games at Iona and Manhattan after furious late rallies in each game fell short in the waning moments. Siena will look to right the ship on Wednesday night when they host St. Peter's at the Times Union Center in a 7 p.m. tilt. They'll also host an ESPN Bracket Buster game this week that's Saturday night at the Times Union Center against Maine. The women's team, meanwhile, split the first two games with a four-game road trip. They fell to Loyola 67-64 in overtime on Saturday, but cruised to a 57-44 win at Ryder on Monday night. Men's lacrosse opened their 2011 season Saturday at Duke, falling to the reigning national champions 20-6 in Durham. The next stop on a challenging out-of-conference schedule comes this Sunday when the Saints travel to the Carrier Dome in Syracuse for a game against Air Force. Water Polo also opened their season this past weekend, going 2-2 two and two in four games at the Bison Invitational at Bucknell. The Saints defeated Mercyhurst and Gannon, but dropped close games against Claremont Mudscripts and the host Bison. The Saints will next travel to Poughkeepsie for Saturday's Marist Invitational. Also on this week's schedule are the MAC Swimming and Diving Championships, which start on Thursday at Erie Community College in Buffalo. The women's tennis team also opens their season this weekend, hosting Union on Saturday at Tri-City in Latham. And while Major League Baseball's pitchers and catchers reported to spring training a few days ago, Siena Baseball starts this weekend with three games at Central Florida. Joining me now is junior second baseman Dan Paolini. Dan, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. With just a few days remaining until the start of the season, how's the team coming together? <coughs> um, team's coming together great. Uh, I mean, with a couple late injuries coming into the season, uh, it's going to hurt us a little bit. And uh, being inside a gym, you know, you can't get the full amount of training you want to go down south. And going down south, teams, they play outside 24-7. And uh, it's going to be challenging, but teams come together good. I think we'll do just fine. How nice is it going to be to get down to Florida in that weather? <laughs> um, I mean, it's going to be nice. It's 10 degrees out here right now. And um, I believe it's supposed to be like 70, in the 75 to 80s range when we're down there. So it's going to be nice. Awesome. You were originally recruited as a pitcher out of mm -hmm. high school. Why the transition to a power hitting second baseman? Um, in high school, I loved, I loved to pitch. Uh, I was being recruited by uh, bigger schools like Big East Conference and ACC schools to pitch. And um, I, I hurt my uh, shoulder in uh, gym class playing flag football. Ooh. Fell down on some wet grass or something and had to have uh, labrum surgery on my shoulder. So then all the other big time schools backed off and I was kind of was like, I have nowhere to really go. I, was, I told these schools I could hit, I could hit, but they really didn't believe me. And Coach Rossi saw me playing a tournament in the summer and uh, offered me a scholarship to hit. And I was like, but I don't, I don't want to hit, I want to pitch. And uh, he was like, all right, you can do both. We'll let you do both. And I don't know, I just came here and just started playing some baseball, having fun. And I guess now I'm considered a power hitting second baseman. <laughs> Last year, you had arguably the best offensive season in program history with 26 home runs putting you among the national leaders. What's your mindset heading into your junior year? Um, uh, there's a lot of expectations for me to do. I had a good freshman year, too, and now uh, sophomore year with all the home runs. Um, my mindset is not to try to do too much. I know if I try to get wrapped up in like, trying to repeat a season like last year, hit 26 home runs, it's just not going to happen. So, uh, I mean, first thing to do is if I do good, the team, the team does good enough to help the team win. And um, so I just want to try to stay within myself, not try to do too much, have fun, and whatever happens, happens. After last season ended, you participated in both the College Baseball Home Run Derby at Rosenblatt Stadium and also the Cape Cod League. They must have been great experiences. Oh, yeah, both are great experiences. I mean, the Cape itself, is you haven't been there or anyone hasn't been there. It's a beautiful place uh, right there on a the little island um, in uh, Ma uh, Massachusetts in Chatham. In Chatham, you get, you get treated really well playing baseball out there, uh, almost like a superstar. And what was tough, though, was uh, I was during, it was like midway through the season <coughs> in the Cape, and I had to fly out to Nebraska, Omaha, to, play, to participate in this home run derby. So in a matter of 24 hours, I was in two places at once, and it was a grind. But uh, I mean, like any college baseball player's dream is to play in Omaha and to compete in the College World Series. And hopefully here at Siena, we get a chance to do that. But uh, to go out there is a great experience. I got to experience in a home run derby contest. but. Nonetheless, it was great. Is it true what they say that being in a home run derby contest alters your swing a little bit if you're in the midst of a season? Um, that that was the whole talk, like when because there was a lot of Hall of Famers there, and uh, Frank Thomas was actually there. Wow. Who uh, for CBS Sports he was working uh, he was working there, and the whole talk was how you got to change your swing for the home run derby. Um, 
I really don't think there's that much of a difference. I mean, there is a little difference. Obviously, you want to put a little more power behind your swing, but uh, I, I just kind of swing the same way. Uh, if you get some lift on the ball, hopefully the ball keeps going and it goes over the fence. You're just 10 home runs away from the program record. If you keep going at last year's pace, you'll shatter it well before the season's over. What does that mean to you? Um, it means, I mean, with, with all these record-breaking stuff, uh, it's all good. It's all good, but at the end of the day, you still, I still want to make the MAC tournament and win a MAC championship. And so it'll be a good accomplishment for an honor for myself individually. But uh, the main goal is to win a MAC championship, and that's that's my main goal. Kevin Corano hit 413 last year, and he's hitting behind you in the order. How comforting is it to have him in that position, ensuring that you get some pitches to hit? Um, Kevin's Kevin's a great player, and lucky for me, I have a good, great player uh, hitting right behind me. I would say we're probably the, the one of the best, or if not, if not the best, three four. Uh, tandem in the nation so uh, it definitely helps me out a lot having a guy like Kevin hitting behind me because if I don't have anyone good hitting behind me then they'll just throw pit, don't throw strikes to me and face the other guy will walk me so if, with him behind me I get to see some pitches hopefully some good ones that I could continue to do what I do you can't get the Barry Bonds treat that's right. <laughs> yeah. last year ended in bitter fashion for you guys with a 1918 loss to Manhattan that knocked you out of postseason contention you've got a lot of returning talent including your entire starting pitching staff how confident are you that you can make a run get in the postseason and potentially win a MAC championship uh, we're, we're extremely confident I, I would say out of my three years here this is the most confident we've ever been and I, I just feel like after that loss, because we were one win, one win away to making the tournament, and we, we, it looked like we were going to win. We were six outs away from winning the game, and all of a sudden a volcano erupted, <coughs> and we were on that bus for at home as the losers, and it was like the world had ended. So we used that as a motivation this year because we came so close last year that we, we, we even wanted more this year. There's a lot more drive, and uh, like you said, the, the pitching staff is returning, and they're a lot more mature. So I think with the, the whole package put together, I think we're going to be good. Good to hear. Lightning round time. Here we go. Your favorite movie? Favorite movie, uh, White Man Can't Jump. Is that true? Yes, it really is. <laughs> favorite TV show? Favorite TV show? I'm a big, I, I'm a big uh, King, Queen, Seinfeld, uh, Everybody Loves Raymond type of guy. Your biggest pet peeve? Biggest pet peeve. Oof, uh, and don't try and tell us nothing annoying. <laughs> You've gotten that before. Biggest pet peeve. Oof, I don't know. I guess it's when I'm driving and people not to say, I'm, I'm a big uh, picky driver, so when people don't single on the road or don't take the turns quick enough, that, um, it bothers me. Who's the funniest member of the team? Funniest member of the team? Uh, I'd have to say Mike Fish. What's the funniest thing he's done? It's just his actions. He's just, he's just out there. He's crazy. Finally, last question. If you could have dinner with any three people, dead or alive, who would they be? Um, my first one would be with Derek Jeter because uh, he's my idol. I love the way he plays the game of baseball on and off the field. Um, then my next one would be, I would say with my, my grandfather. My grandfather was uh, um, a big uh, inspiration to me when I was younger, helping me play baseball. He, he passed away when I was young, and he's really never got to see me like, come out to what I've, been, what I've become. So I would love to sit down and have a nice chat with him. And um, my last one, I would have to say, uh, Michael Jordan or Tiger Woods because they're one of the greatest that's ever played the game. And Fair enough. Well, that's going to do it for today. I'd like to thank Dan Paolini for stopping by. I'm Andrew Champagne, and I'll see you next week.